Welcome to a quick tutorial on how to draw a vector in Ibis Paint. Now, is it at all possible to draw a vector in Ibis Paint? Yeah, kind of. So up here in the menu with the vibrating finger, we can select from multiple drawing tools. So most people will guess what the line is for. You just simply press a point and wherever you release it, that's where it's going to draw the line to. And the way that it draws the line is with the active brush. So let's choose dip pen bleed and you can see it gets these fuzzy edges. The same goes with the rectangle and the circle. But this won't help us in our inking stage. So if you draw comics or you draw manga or anime uh, or any cartoon style really, then you want this one. It's called Betsia Curve here, but as I've found out, it's more true to what 3D programs will call NURBS, which stands for Non-Uniform Rational Basic Splines. That's kind of useless information, but now you have it. So the way it works is you simply press a place and it makes a point. When you press a second place, it makes another point. But as you press a third place, you can see that it tries to bend the curve through the point. So that's what splines are. That's what vectors are. They are uh, mathematical equations to describe how a curve is passing through a point. And as we put in more points, that equation changes automatically. Again, it uses the brush we have active. And here it's pretty cool. We can change our brush to see the different uh, effect or the different result immediately. So now let's just choose the deep pen hard because then it becomes much easier. We can change the color. We can of course change the size. And please notice that in the beginning and in the end it's getting thinner. So it's kind of if I made the stroke manually. If you don't want that you can choose the thickness of the start and the thickness of the end to be 100%. And like so. So now it's perfectly even. Now, you can even adjust the points to your liking. And you can add more points, but only in the end. You cannot add any points in the middle. So say if I want a point to be between this point and this point. That's simply not possible. And that's why I'm saying that this is not true vector. Well, it kind of is vector. But the problem is that as soon as I press OK in the little green uh, check mark down here in the bottom, it's OK'd. And in our layers, we don't have a vector layer. We cannot go back and adjust the curve ever again. So what it did was that it made a vector, then it did raster graphics along this vector, and what we are left with is the raster version. So look, if I zoom in and zoom in, we can actually see that this is raster graphics because true vector would not behave like this. It would always be sharp. So is it usable? Sure it is. You just have to remember to draw in a high enough resolution. And as it is, if we go down to our canvas here and choose change canvas size, you can see the size which I'm working in right now, which is 3,500 by 2,200 pixels. That's fairly big. It Ibis Paint, on my iPad at least, can, can, can pull off uh, a much larger resolution if need be. But I found out that if I do that, uh, running at the max resolution, and have many, many layers, like uh, above 25 layers or 30 layers, uh, then it gets slow and eventually I will get a warning. And if I don't heat that warning to consolidate my layers, um, it might actually close unexpectedly. And the worst thing about that is, if it's a long time since you saved, then your alterations may be lost. But um, let's clear this and see if we can make it usable in a real scenario. So um, let's just clear the layer and let's make a sketch.
Okay, so now the sketch has been made. And what I did was use the dip pin bleed, which is a basic brush. I didn't change much, just the thickness. Uh, so let's try to take a look at how we will ink it. First of all, I will take this layer, which is my sketch layer, and I will turn down the opacity. I usually draw with red, but you can draw with whatever color you please. And with the FX panel over here, with the filters, you can always change the color. So even if you prefer to sketch in black, uh, you, you can have a red layer afterwards by using the FX panel. But that's not what this tutorial is about. So let's just create a new layer, which will be our inking layer. And we have black chosen as our color, and I prefer to use the dip pin. And let's just chuck down the thickness of start and end to zero. So we will get strokes that are uneven in thickness. By going up here, we simply choose our Betzer curve, which was really nerves, and we avoid to have the fill engaged. Now, let's just see what happens if we do that. If we have the fill chucked on, you can have the area in between your points automatically filled. And some people would maybe think that this is great for having the base color um, immediately in, for example, the skin areas, the face or the body or whatever. Um, but the issue with that is when it comes to shading. So, uh, well, uh, the way I work, uh, it's, it's much faster to just have the lines um, like uh, pure and then on a layer underneath it, I will fill with whatever color I, I want as a base color. And on top of that, I can have my shades, whether it's uh, cell shadings or soft shadings. So without further ado, let's zoom in a bit. So I made a very rough sketch, which needs a lot of correcting. But let's start with, yeah, let's start with outlining the hair. So in the beginning, I will just need this fold down here because typically my, my workflow will be to, to use a different brush for the hair entirely. And I will point my curve like this and that's okay. So in here, when, when shaping the head, I will remember to make multiple points. And that's because, as I stated earlier, you cannot go back and make more points in case you need one. Then I would have to remove or move all the, the points that I made after where I want to insert it. And it'll take ages. So let's just do like this and say that's fine. And from here... We do like this and down to the point or the tip of the hair. Okay, so here we, we, we have an issue. If I want a sharp corner here, what you would do in programs like Adobe Photoshop, you would simply uh, draw out the bets, your handles, and you would tune it to an angled uh, position. You cannot do that here. So our only option is to actually make it end here and then draw the other one in a separate stroke. So let's say this is fine and the other one will run from in here and out here. Now, there's a small gap here, but I'm okay with that. I could, of course, go back and redo it. Uh, actually, I might do that because the curve wasn't so nice. But no matter how precise I am, I will probably never make them meet satisfactory. For that purpose, I can just turn down the thickness like this and manually, whoops, turn off the, the drawing tool, the vector tool, and just bind them manually. That will make it much easier to fill out the area afterwards. So we turn the vector tool on again, and whoop, fat fingers, and we continue where we left off. And I forgot to turn up the thickness, but luckily I can do that afterwards. 
So let's say we're happy with this result. As you can see already now, uh, there's a lot of opportunities by using this vector tool. Also, when, when you sketch uh, loosely, like I've done here, you can easily go in and correct the curve. Now, if, if you cannot make the point as close to the previous point as you want, just make it further away and, and drag it closer like this. It is a bit annoying that I cannot get rid of all the blue points um, to see how the end result will be, but maybe it'll come in a future version. So for right now, I'm pretty happy with the way this curve has become. Oh, let's make the underarm a bit, a, a bit thinner and make the elbow more pronounced. So it's more sharp. Like this. Okay, so that was a mistake. Of course, you can use your eraser here. And instead of trying to, to, to do it with the line tool, I will switch it off again and, and just bind it manually. Ah, I didn't put my brush size down, so let's just do that to a little less aggressive fall. And all of these lines can be made in one layer, or you can at some point make a new layer and continue. Now, what I also want to show you is that if we had filled, uh, well, that doesn't make much uh, much sense. Let's just quickly make a, a filled area because what I want to show you requires a filled area. Let's make it uh, this color and make a new layer here. So we do like this. Uh, what you can also do with this vector method is that you can use the eraser tool for it. So if we do that, I didn't hit it. So let's just double check that it's chosen like this. So now our eraser has been chosen and we are actually drawing with our eraser tool. So we can subtract or uh, subtract um, anything we want in the way that we want. Now, I don't actually know where this will come in really handy, but now you know it exists and well, you can use it or not. So as you can see here on the layer preview, I have made a curve that will delete something from the layer. And if I accept it, that's how it is. So let's go back to our sketch again. Let's choose our brush and let's choose black again for inking. Now, of course, you can, you, you can choose other colors in a future tutorial. I will show you how to gradient those colors. Um, so, so for example, if we wanted um, the continuity of, of, of this underarm, to change from a dark skin color to a lighter skin color, uh, even in our inking phase, that can be done. And it can also be done if you are inking in black, like, like I'm doing here. So let's see. Let's make the muscle a bit more pronounced, but we don't, we don't want her to have fat wrists. It's not a thing, fat wrists. So we do like this. And for here, I will make this a continuous arc to kind of have the, well, obviously this is a mistake if I wanted her to be clothed. So as of right now, she ain't. And of course, the last part with the belly going down to the legs. And again, we have a little problem area up here. We simply switch the drawing tool off 
and we manually draw here. Now I did this fairly fast, but um, to achieve the best result, you should really think about varying your thickness and remember what thicknesses you use, kind of, because uh, it'll look messy if you have really thick strokes like I have up here in the hair and really thin strokes like I have here on the body. You want it to be a bit more consistent, but it's okay to vary it. And actually, it's it's, it's not just okay, it'll, it'll look better for it. Um, but... Um, but, but of course, too much variation is also an issue. Yeah, and you can use the, the Betsy curve down here as well for making lines in the hair. And this is a really good tool if you don't have a pen uh, for, for finger drawing because you have so much control um, and, and becomes so smooth and fluent. I mean, drawing a curve like, like this is, is pretty hard with the fingers alone. And if you want to do straight lines, like for example this sword, you simply just make two points. Boom. I can make a point going up here. And that would actually be a mistake. So if I want multiple points and they're all going to be sharp, I will switch to the polyline tool, which is here. And I get perfectly sharp corners. Which is good for a weapon like this. It's supposed to kind of be a katana. Um, and when you're happy with that, you, you just accept. So these two tools kind of work the same, except the Betsy curve will find an easing of the points that you make and, and make the line go through with easing. And the other one here will create corners. And notice that for each corner I make, it makes that end loop, uh, which, which you could manipulate by by just uh, adjusting the thickness of your end and start. So doing that, we get perfect, uh, perfect thickness all around. That was it for today. I hope you learned something and hopefully you will see the value of having this vector-like tool. And also hopefully EPS Paint will upgrade this tool to be more powerful in the future.